Hi, this is Cindy. And Michael. And Bella is down there going to go for your phone in a second. <laughs> um, there we go. Say hi, Bella. Uh, we should probably double check to make sure everybody can hear us all right. Um, but it looks like your mom and Linda and Kiri are in the room, along with a couple others, because it looks like seven people so far. That's good. Hi, little one. You go say hi. Can you say hi? Oh, I think the Amazon stuff showed up yesterday. Yeah. And I did put it under the tree. Didn't open it. You want to go back to Dada? Nope. The tree showed up today. The tree showed up today as well. It's there. It, yeah. It, he was hiding it. It has not been decorated yet. You want to go down and play? Yeah, there we go. Okay. So she is mobile um, for the most part. So they're officially watching the last week, I guess. Um, yeah, a little bit, maybe a little bit before that. Maybe it was the steps. middle of the week. Before. I oh, think yeah. it was the weekend before, weekend and then before. we, uh, and then she's really, she wants me out of the picture. Um, and then she's really started taking off this last week quite a bit, and she wants to grab off everything off my desk. Which... Babysitter's here. She knows she's been <laughs> starting to chase around. Chasing around the sure toddler. She doesn't move too fast. Yeah. Toddlin' toddler in the house. Um, so, and actually, we did have a video of that. Yeah, you went up? No? Yes? Oh, keyboard. Um, really? I know it's getting late, but she took a four hour nap earlier, so she wasn't about to fall back asleep before the show. <laughs> Sorry for the squeals. Yeah, what do you see? You see the tree. I think she just noticed the tree. <clears throat> mm -hmm. It went up while she was asleep. You gonna go see? You gonna go see? You gonna crawl? Okay. Doors closed back there, so she has her play area safe. Anyway, hello everybody. We are going to be. What's wrong? You have to decide if you're doing a show or baby. I know. I got to do both, but she's <laughs> also crying in the background. So sorry about that, guys. Um, we got a couple videos up. We got Easiest Poet Transition up. And that was a short, short video. Actually, two very short videos. And we did have one meeting milestones with Bella Curl walking around. Um, this is not from that. That's actually a separate picture of her walking toy that got her started and she now uses it to walk faster than she can um, but so she still uses that but she is now walking on her own a bit so um, I'm gotta enjoy, adjust my screen a little bit make sure I can see the chat anyway yes Miranda came in and I think that's it okay we have a couple other pictures of Bella to appease grandma's uh, updates. She did try lemons for the first time. That was interesting. And yes, she has joined the Han and Livingston Sour. side of the family of eating raw lemons. She liked the first one. She ate the entire one and started eating a second one before she threw it away. Um, Second time I tried that, she just threw it away right at the beginning. So I'm not sure she really liked it, but she did go for that first one. Um, <laughs> we also have sent out, if Tina's in the room, I haven't seen her yet. Tina's box, she was the winner last year, last well, week, or last month. It's giveaway. got the um, shipping stamp okay. label on it, but it's going to be hopefully tomorrow morning. Oh, we, we've got to go to the... Um, auto shop tomorrow. Maybe yeah. we'll, if we're there early, uh, the post office won't be open probably. No, you might have to drop it off a little I'll, later. I'll than try that. and do it later. It'll either be Monday yeah. or Tuesday. Yeah, but that's a month delayed from waiting a long time. Yes, Bella pushed it from the other room. Hey, what's up? Yeah. Bella pushed it from the other room into this room to try to stand on it. So if there's anything crushed, Bella stood on, but no, I didn't. No, she didn't stuff. crush the box at all. So there's a bunch of padding in there. <laughs> and the box didn't give, so she was I think the box is fine. Um but okay. And we'll keep going. Bella got a toy from grandma and grandpa on my side. 
last time we went to, we actually dropped off turkey um, and Thanksgiving stuff just to keep them from traveling and stuff and because we usually host. But they gave Bella a little dog dog pull toy. So she played all night with that. Um, I don't know if she's played with a lot recently, but she's well, definitely. A little bit. <clears throat> yeah. When she gets up and moving a little bit more and remembers that she can pull it while she's walking, I think she will start playing with it again. But, um, yeah, Miranda, I love sour things, too, so it doesn't surprise me that she liked to eat a lemon. And one of her cousins, who's technically not blood-related, also ate lemons as a baby and loved them. So, um, yeah, Holly used to do that. But those are main Bella updates. Um, we have been doing a lot of projects around here, so this jumps around a little bit, but if we'll start on the chicken topic, uh, we butchered our last of the chickens last month. Um, so these Cornish Cross are now in the freezer. The Bard Rock in here actually got moved in with the main flock, which the video was about. Um, the main flock with the guard rock, bard rocks were in the garden for three weeks, four weeks, maybe yeah, four weeks. Yeah. Um, so they were hanging out, cleaning up our garden. Um, Lucky was there with his flock. Gus was there with his flock. Um, so they've done a lot in the garden, including including uh, digging up a few potatoes. So <laughs> we did collect some more potatoes as the chickens dug them up, which didn't have time. I might get back out there if the ground softens and pull some more up, but we'll also let some grow for next year. Um, I think also uh, through this... Are you tired? No, I'm just dying. <laughs> through this uh, month, I was fortifying the winter coops because we had all those problems through the summer losing chicks. So that got finished up, and just today, we stored away the summer coop. Although we moved them into the winter coop last week. Yeah. But we finally <coughs> finally moved the summer coop out of the way and off to the side and got everything stored away. Um, those were most of the projects, I think, this month so far, or over the last month. As far as non-food related. Yeah. Or non-eating related. Um, today we also cut down a Christmas tree. <laughs> Christmas tree farm's about a mile and a half away. Yeah. That's they nice. were quite busy. Everybody had their truck out yeah. and they, uh, they probably had 20 or 30 groups there. Yeah. trees. So we got our tree. We got it up. We don't have it decorated yet. Um, kind of ran out of we time. We also found out last year when we went there, we've been there three times. Mm -hmm. We have a short needle tree, and last year the short needle hung on. We had it there for, I think, all the way through January before we pulled it out. <laughs> yeah. um, and the needles really hung on. They had a few fall off, but a small percentage. We get the longer needled ones when we were in New York. It's just versus, I think it's a, a Douglas fir. Um, this, this was something else. I know, this I'm trying to remember what this one anyways, was. Anyways, it's much tighter needles, and some yeah. people don't like them because they're smaller. But the other one started shedding like crazy. Yes. Plus, these are fresh, but we had it for... A month two, and a half? A month and a half at least, maybe yeah. almost two months. I think we only put water in it once or twice. Yeah. So, Hi. Uh, oh, yeah. I get an ice cream so that cup. Was, that was interesting. So we went and got another one of the short needled. They have a few types there, but mostly this one, and so... Uh, we decided it was good not to have all the needles on the floor in two weeks. Yeah, yeah. No, that was good. I mean, it shed a couple needles as we were putting it up, but I mean, rubbing around and all yeah. that. But well, they shake it off really good before. We yeah. had them shake it but not bind it because we were going a mile and a half. Yeah. No reason to bind We were it putting it on, uh, on top of a vehicle. It was just going into the truck bed. Got which, a new truck. You do have a new truck, which I don't have a picture of. That's that's probably, that was new this month. That was. Um, so we have uh, a new upgraded, old truck. A new old truck plow, with an upgraded plow. Plow, plow truck. Yeah. Yep. Farm truck, plow truck. Um, Actually, it's a business truck. Yes, it is, technically. <laughs> yes. The majority of the time it's going to pick up grain, but it does yes. get cross used a little bit for <laughs> projects. 
I keep getting handed toy ice cream things, so sorry about the distraction. Oh, yeah, put your leaves in the uh, raised bed. That's a good yes, idea. Perfect. Um, we have been putting our leaves recently into beds that we're building up up front for the, um, basically for the food forest. Green Gables so, is here. Hi, Green Gables. Um, but we haven't put them into our garden recently, although we did the first three years of the garden. Yeah, and the garden is doing well because yeah. of the chicken compost. It's and getting, the leaves. And, and yeah. yeah, the leaves over there, but the chicken compost and other things um, seem to be taking it over. Yeah, we've been putting the run material from the winter run into the... We are seeing a lot of loose, loosening of the soil, a lot less sand. It's getting darker, so there has been some big yes. changes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. the new truck is a 97 Chevy. New to us truck. It replaced a 95 Dodge, although it's got about half the miles and a third of the rust. 25% of the rust of the other one. Yeah. So, uh, it's... A little different to get used to. Drives a little different. It's automatic, too. AC, I believe, works, although I haven't used it. It's an automatic. The heat definitely works. Uh, it's still a three-quarter ton. It's still got the big engine in it. Yeah. Six-foot bed instead of an eight-foot bed. It's got a better trailer hitch. But it has a back seat. The radio works, and it has a back seat. Uh, so, so we can put, safely put Bella in her car seat in the back seat. Yep. So there are, oh, and it has a bed liner, and it's probably going to have a cap on it. Yeah. pretty soon. So there's some big big upgrades on it and it came with a bigger plow so I sold my other truck another plow for the plow that happened to come with it. So older but bigger plow. Good. Rebel Canner's got a mountain of wood chips and adding leaves to the chip pile. You did get the leaves blown. I did. I blew the leaves twice and uh, we have a very minimal amount of leaves. Uh, it got really cold but we have not had much precipitation. We've had only a dusting of snow. Last year we got dumped on with heavy snow. I just ended the leaf season right in the middle. And most people didn't clean their leaves up till spring. So I did blow most of them into our a number of big beds in the front, our leaf beds that are protecting uh, some of the trees and some of the shadier spots. And so that's pretty well stripped out so that the uh, grass can see through. Yep. And uh, cleaned up. We I know mulched it's up the back one time. Yeah. And so things are in pretty good shape uh, on all that, yeah. She's trying to give the dog who's on the couch a book, by the way. <laughs> um, used trucks are hard to find because everybody wants them. Everybody wants, like, we use it as a third vehicle. as a yeah, Like, we just had both of our cars into the shop for basic maintenance and tire rotation. The stuff. backup. And so it gives you a great option to be able to grab that third car. And we don't drive it very much, but you don't have to think about what am I going to do and is it in the shop all day. Um, you can just kind of grab the third one for the day and decide who takes it. Come over here. She's trying to read a book to Puddin. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah, she's got it open right next to Puddin on the yeah. couch. Yeah, so trucks, there's a bounty trucks here. Of course, most of them are very rusted. Yeah. What I shot for this time was, actually, I was looking for somebody that had, you know, like an older person that was selling a truck because they basically didn't need it mm -hmm. type of thing. Well, I ended up talking to one of the local guys who's a business, and I said, hey, my truck, not going to do the new clutch on it. Just going to sell it. Um, you know, I got to go buy a new truck. And he goes, well, you can have that truck out there. Mm -hmm. And he goes, I'm selling that truck. It has a big plow on it. It's got a v, v plow on it. I'm going to sell it because I'm trading up for a bigger truck that has a big snow blower on it. It's not posted for yet. He had a dealer's license. Mm -hmm. And he goes, it's not posted yet. But he quoted me a price. I called him a week later. I said, hey, I'd like to go look at it. Went and looked at it. Mm -hmm. Took five hundred dollars off, and we said we'll talk about it in two months or before it snows, because we both had vehicles to sell and refit, and uh, so it wasn't even on the market. And it was a truck that he had been driving and babying. He had, he had done a bunch, you know, there's stuff that's some rust and dents and things, but he had done a bunch of extra work. So that was kind of what I was looking for on an old truck. Cross my fingers that hopefully there's a few things have been done to it, and it's got mm -hmm. you know good tires and good suspension and. Pulled a race car down to Indiana this year with it, so uh, I, I think it's doing I'm like, pretty well. Yeah, it's going in the shop tomorrow for uh, one little thing. So yeah. uh, hopefully I don't get any surprises, but it seems to be fine. Yeah. So i have only driven it like a hundred miles, two hundred miles at most. Um, I, you know what? I have commercial plates on it mm -hmm. because I use it. I'm going to look to do a few more deliveries and things with it. Um, put a cap on it. I'm gonna take our pallets of grain that come in um, and some of our other supplies. 
So I had to put commercial insurance on it to make sure we were protected the company because the yeah. company was protected. So I, I had to get a separate policy and put commercial plates. And it, it wasn't overly pricey. It was a little more, just a little more than putting it onto our, our main policy. Um, so no, I don't have farm plates on it. I have commercial hey, plates. Hey, Tina. So that's... Okay, Tina. Your box is still getting ready to go out. It will be out either tomorrow or... Tuesday at the latest, it's got a packing slip yeah. on it. It just needs to make it Sorry, to the we, post office. We, were, we weren't sure of the address to send it to. But well, uh, I was delayed for a long time, uh, <laughs> uh, for a while, and then we kept, I forgot for certain, had asked Cindy for sure that it was going to you. Yeah. And then I looked up your address, which I have, and I found one, and then I found the other. I'm like, wait a minute. Which Let's one? make sure we're sending it to where it it's supposed to go. to go. So yeah. we finally got that sorted out this week. Yeah. And we got the tea out last early in the month. The tea from the month before went out. <laughs> that um, was just that went out right away. That yeah, that went out. Um, yeah. So, so we got that, and hopefully um, that went to Kiri, right? That yeah, that one went, hopefully, went to Kiri. Hopefully she got that, and she's liking enjoying her that. herbal tea. One of my friends, Alberto, who uh, Chef Alberto, had jumped on last month. Yeah, I had sent him uh, some as a gift. Uh, he's we've been sending some stuff back and forth and he was really enjoying it so yep. uh, yeah so guess it's still got still key I guess. <laughs> well we're in debating the spring, we, yeah. might, we might give it a shot we, we might we're kind of debating a little or i'm second guessing it because we've had some bad silky luck recently yeah, but bella can start to raise them in a year or two that is true she'll need something for the early 4-h will probably be silkies egg sizing and silkies <laughs> He's already planning 4-H. What's the minimum age for 4-H? Probably five. I don't know. That's in a few years. <laughs> you got to be so able to train them. The other thing is, other than that, or she's got to train a, train a puppy. Yeah, right? So, um, I don't know a how. A huge puppy. A huge puppy, yes. We might have to train a huge puppy first, because I'm not sure if this dog will be into that in four or five years. Yeah, she's going to be pretty slow. She'll be pretty old by then. <laughs> She'll be hanging out, I think, but, but yeah. slow. Not showing. She yeah. doesn't like to show anyways. No. No, she's a shot dog. But, um, yeah, silkies are pretty, and they make really good mamas. Um, you see that cute pudding in the corner? Yeah, she's yep, sitting she's on her bed. Um, so, yeah, we do have some more things. You did have, am I okay showing this picture? I should double Yeah, yeah, it's that. fine. Okay. I've been, I have, didn't you get, you didn't over open the file. I have the whole file of the pro pictures. Yeah, I haven't opened the file, but I had, had a collaboration through one of my clients, who's a who's a big local business, was shooting a bunch of the local businesses that they support and buy from, and so we're going to send a professional photographer in if you'd like, and they're going to shoot your product for us to do some some community stuff, but also you can uh, you can. Um, you know, he'll send you the good stuff back and you have the ability to use it. He's not keeping the rights or the business. So I had about a four hour shoot with a super professional who spent years shooting product. Mm -hmm. And we had a we had a blast because he had never seen this type of equipment. I had the kitchen all cleaned out and set up and just said, Hey, what do you want to do? And I just started pulling stuff out for him. Um, he came in about eight, eight thirty with a van, and when he came in with cameras and lights and reflector and everything and i'm like whoa and then he's like hold on and he had light you know heavy duty battery light boxes coming in i was like and i had done a lot of um video and movie shoots at places that i had worked not me yeah. but at the so i mean it wasn't like that but i'm like whoa this guy is serious he had his own van and stuff and he spent about four hours which i couldn't have paid i couldn't have come close to paid for him to do that mm -hmm. and so he did all kinds of shoots on different things. And I said, well, we're going to get this stuff. We're going to move things out of the way. Do you need that in the shot? And he says, he's like, no, no, we want some of the stuff. We'll, we'll blur things out and work on it. He goes, because we're not just shooting product. We're telling a story. And I'm like, so he was a real, yeah. you know, he was looking far beyond the let's shoot some pictures of some pasta. Yeah. He's like, let's get pictures of equipment. Let's get pictures of dyes. Let's be artistic. Let's, let's create a progression and create a story. Uh, pictures with me, you know, and so he just did, like I said, I couldn't have come close to paying for that. I know what those type of things cost. Yeah. And uh, everything I make all month and more could have <laughs> not paid for it, probably. Yeah. So that was really, really neat. Um, spent a few hours 
and uh, we kind of hit it off. He's gluten free, but I gave him a bunch of pasta. I had for gifts, uh, or no, I had a bunch of so I gave him a bunch of sauce, which mm. you do locally only. I gave him some sauce and some olive oil, yeah, and stuff. And so, and he had said he cooked with it. It was great. So we had a really good collaboration. He's a local guy, so good contact. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, we have a I have a whole file that I you need to look at. Uh, yeah, I do, I do. So we can incorporate some stuff into the web page and other things. But yes, she is playing by she herself for the time and moments yeah. and sometimes longer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, She's emptying her play basket over there um, pretty quickly. So yeah, so fun. we did photo shoots. Uh, well, we've been doing GIF. Oh, you're putting. A, you can put that up. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. I'm trying. We're working hard on gift baskets, both selling them and preparing them. Trying to not oversell them, which you know we have plenty. Trying not to undersell and be left with product, but we also don't overextend ourselves, and we're just limited number. We're limiting them because we want to do them really well. I had somebody in making up. We had a big order uh, for another cool um, group. It was uh, somebody has a a big job in the um, in the state, and uh, was using them for personal gifts. Um, so that was pretty neat. Um, so uh, Kalamazoo Candle, which is a local really cool business, uh, it's gotten quite big. Actually, got a shout out in a press conference from the governor this week on uh, shopping small and and uh, along with some others. But I was surprised we did not. <laughs> we're, 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 we couldn't. We couldn't kept up with the business. Uh, I don't think. But uh, yeah, we're doing gift baskets and and working on that and have a few new. Uh, Marketing campaigns have some email and some Facebook campaigns and mm -hmm. uh, one launched a little bit ago and then some new stuff is launching over the weekend. Do you and have any coupon codes for those? I do. Um, right now we have, um, oh, what is it? What did you call it? <laughs> oh. uh, it's for the gift baskets. So the gift baskets, the olive oil, and the pasta assortments, which are a six pack and a twelve pack, not necessarily gift baskets, not in a basket, but we'll uh, like an assorted. We'll pack. tissue. We'll tissue paper them up and make them uh, nice. I've got to. Uh, basically, it's ten percent off any of these plus free shipping is on fifty dollars or more as a usual. Generally, as a. So let me just figure looking out, up the code. Uh, what the code is. You Just, sent it in the email. I did. I might actually have it in my email then. Um, Tina just found a local grass-fed farm, smoked some jerky today. That sounds good. Uh, oh, that's... We were making some jerky. Well, we had a friend making jerky. Friend we'll get making to that jerky. shortly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yes. Um, but <laughs> we're both going to sit here sitting at, looking up on our phones. Slow, we're... Um, shop our holiday sale. Uh, it's sorry. Looking it up, looking it up. Holiday. That's it. That's it. Holiday Saver 2020. Yeah, Holiday Saver 2020. That's it. I knew it made sense. <laughs> yeah. Well, so Holiday Saver 2020 is good for 10 percent off gift basket. Any and I believe and I believe we have it set uh, where it's actually multiples. <laughs> so uh, it's not just on one. Any gift baskets do January 3rd. Uh, any of the olive oil products and either one of our multi-unit um, yep. six or twelve packs uh, does not include our local stuff, which is free local drop-off. It is already premium priced, is, oh, is really well priced um, because we do local drop-offs. Um, but anyways, that saves some money. So if you're looking for something, uh, we'll be happy to do that. She was uh, trying to hit Puddin's nose with a. Puzzle uh -oh. piece. Uh -oh. no, no puzzle noses. Puss, Puddin is so out of it though. She barely blinked. Yeah, you. Okay, those are the paws. <laughs> um, so. Yeah, so the only thing I would say on that is, and you know, we're just making it available. We're not pushing pushing anybody to buy them, but yeah, uh, I think they're really great. We think they're a great value, and they're carefully hand packed and hand selected. And one of five of the people that work with us and or more are involved in handling it. Um, but um, I would recommend ordering by, oh. and, and so we can ship before by next Tuesday um, if you want it shipped. Anybody who's in the shipping world right now has probably gotten the alerts from all the shippers. We yeah. use UPS and US Mail. 
they are overloaded. Um, things are about at shutdown. They're denying product from some of the big companies and kind of staggering, picking it up to send it. We're small and I drop it off direct. But things are so backed up. If it doesn't go out by like next Wednesday, uh, probably next week, I'm not sure it's going to make it by Christmas. It'll make it, but just be My aware on anything you're ordering. Get it quick. Yeah. Um, our local UPS is hiring drivers. They're hiring independent contractors. You show up with a panel truck or a van and base, pass their basic clearance, and they're paying cash for smiles. That's how desperate even UPS is right now. Um, they're not just hiring extra staff. They're trying to get vehicles. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's truck. I drove in there to drop off, and they had rental tractor trailers, storage yeah. units, everything at our at our regional drop off. So, um, be forewarned. Packages will be late if you if you if don't you order soon. Yeah. Um, oh, yep. Uh, Tina's ordering for outlaws. Linda looks like a road runner when running. I think they're talking about a chicken braid. Yeah. Um, oh, no. Carrie's dehydrator died. Likes so to dehydrate. The fan or the heater or both. <laughs> likes to dehydrate deer meat scraps for the dogs. I saw some pretty nice medium-sized dehydrators on SausageMaker.com recently. Yeah. Uh, pretty well-priced for a medium-sized one. I find I, I had to go buy some casings. We did some... Um, butchering projects uh, in the last few weeks also. Um, and I yeah. was not by a dehydrator, but... Um, we'll come yeah. right back to that topic, yeah. too. Yeah, UPS, yes. People are renting U-Haul trucks. They are renting trucks, as I saw them <laughs> chalking numbers on them. But also people are grabbing whatever vehicles they have and you know for the subcontract. So, yeah, it's pretty scary out there. I'm also wondering what the quality of deliveries may... Uh, Doing their best to to get product moved around, so we appreciate that. You did also have one big event before things start shutting down again. Yeah, we got um, this was for that. We got seven courses of gold. Second, first full weekend in November. Second weekend. Second weekend in November. Yes. No, it was the eighth, I think. Ooh, oh, um, oh. So seven courses of gold is a charity fundraiser dinner for local culinary okay. scholarships. Our local chef club that's part of the American Culinary Federation hosts it. We did it at um, 600, which is a farm-to-table restaurant. We relaunched it last year and had a really good time. So it's seven or actually nine courses sometimes because there's some intermezzos and giveaways at the end. Um, we were able to run socially distancing. We were able to run about 80 people, which uh, was their capacity uh, at the time was spacing and capacity um, and we had two different working kitchen areas where everybody was able to take stats on everybody and mask up and sanitize and plate and do what we needed to do uh, we pulled it off everything went great people loved it it was packed out with the f people just couldn't wait to get out for especially dinner so we did fill the full 80 seats we would have been 120 130 if, at if normal not. times yeah um, and uh, yeah, but people had a great time. Nobody got sick, um, and we raised uh, a reasonable amount of money—a few thousand dollars for future culinary scholarships this year—and um, had some really, really good food. The most interesting thing was one of the chefs who works with a company that does Santa Monica—I think Santa Mar Monica Barbecue, which is basically open hardwood. Um, coal cooking, and they typically do tri-tip beef and stuff. We've talked about them. One of the guys that works with them was a really good chef, wanted to do whole lamb, and I was able to help connect with uh, a great lamb producer in the area that has amazing lamb, got a whole lamb. He was out all day, and it's on like a trailer with a rack they can move up and down, and they open roasted it. It smelled, it was a warm day too, which was crazy. It smelled great. So they did this whole roasted lamb with a whole bunch of stuff. It was, that was really over the top um, course. So, yeah, I don't I shot a few of the pictures. That's uh, Muse right there. Yeah, I just. I didn't take too many. You had some more, but I didn't yeah. put them all in. So that went off well. We're like, wow. And we just kind of opened up things. And we kept pushing. Like, we're going to go, go, go. And we're kind of, unless there's a problem. Within a week and a half, uh, restaurants were idled or were really really cut back to groups of six 
Uh, now we've been at restaurants are basically been closed for two weeks, and um, there's no way we could have pulled that dinner off probably a week later. Oh I mean, no, I think two weeks it, later, no way. I th I think things were shutting back down, and I think that Wednesday after or something that it was like only a few days after you guys did it. Um, so hmm. the sprinter sprinters sprinter. are great. I have a bunch of people that have the sprinters, and we're I, uh, the sprinters and some of the Dodge equivalents. They're a great. Uh, yeah. vehicle the um, gas the amount you can put in them and the gas mileage you get with those things they're really really great for uh, um, you know for doing routes and things and we'll move on you guys if you have um, chef questions it is time for ask the chef so we're gonna get into actual some of the food stuff yeah we got a number of food um, you might as well explain this dinner this month this was a really tasty dinner so okay. I had a, I mean, it was, it's a secondary steak cut. I think it was um, it's either a Denver or a uh, Sizzler. Sizzler doesn't mean too much. Um, Sizzler cut. So it's a you know larger whole muscle cut. It's a steak. So I pan seared that, put it on some mushrooms. Um, it was just mushroom. Sliced it out. And then I had been through to the famous delis and, and gourmet shop Zingerman's. Ann Arbor. Um, in Ann Arbor on some deliveries. And I bought a couple of cheeses. I hadn't been in there bought anything, I think, all year. And so I bought some nice cheeses. Um, and that is an Italian import that's aged, got a little bit of rind. I, I go look it up. Um, it was really good. So we just laid a little bit of that over the lean grilled uh, beef and the mushrooms. And it was amazing. So, yeah, that was one meal. Actually, that made a couple of meals. And, and we had, um, of course, we made turkey we did for two, Thanksgiving. Two turkeys. Two turkeys. So the plan for Thanksgiving this year is, for la recently we've been hosting Thanksgiving here, and Cindy's older sister's family and her parents have come here, yeah. either for the day or for a few days. And neither cook very much. Neither one are yeah, really doing a lot of do much cooking. Definitely aren't real excited about cooking Thanksgiving. Um, Michigan is also on a pretty heavy COVID lockdown, um, even more so, I guess, about the same then. But uh, we're having a pretty heavy spike in a lot of areas in COVID cases. And my sister-in-law works in healthcare. Healthcare and, and parents are uh, quite older. a bit older and, and have the usual health concerns. So um, we decided that we were going to just have her parents come here. And then we just decided the best thing to do was... Um, we were going to um, just cook Thanksgiving and bring it catered style to yeah. both of them. So we were able to actually do one family here in town mm -hmm. and then both of them. So um, I prepped Wednesday after finishing up uh, pasta market, I guess in the evening till late. Yes. And I threw on one turkey, a butterball turkey under the smoker at four in the morning. And then, uh, and actually smoked really fast. It got done faster than I expected. And then I threw on a local turkey from our friends down the street mm -hmm. that had raised a turkey in the oven. Make sure we had enough turkey. Yep. And then I basically finished up everything else. That took all morning into the early afternoon. Uh -oh. Because we packaged everything up into court you know, plastic court containers and deli tins and the whole deal. I happen to have coolers and hot boxes and thermal warmers, uh, all this catering stuff. Uh, so while it takes a bunch more time to get it all ready, like we could have eaten at 12, but we couldn't leave till about 1.45 mm -hmm. uh, because of all the packing and you have to sort it all out and make sure things are hot and cold and loaded up. Uh, so we did that, uh, but it went really well. Everything stayed hot because it had good equipment. And um, yeah, so we dropped off at the three of them. We had to drive an hour and a half or so across the state. Traffic was really light, which is why we were, knew we could do it. And mm -hmm. uh, to make that round trip would have been terrible most years. To you know, we could go maybe <laughs> one way at best. Um, so we dropped off full amount of food. Saw both of them very briefly, distanced, and uh, yeah. and so they got generous amount of food. And then we came back at our apportionment, reheated it, and that was Thanksgiving. And of course, everybody has 
leftover turkey as well. So we did have... We didn't, pre we didn't have a lot of turkey. Lot. We ate it for a day or two. And then uh, I think it was Sunday night. Sunday I chopped up only a modest of remaining turkey and made a turkey soup. So we had some turkey stock. I had some chicken stock or turkey stock or whatever. Um and made just some basic onion carrot celery with some mushrooms that have been laying around. We're getting a little older. And turkey. So it's a cream cream soup. I put some potatoes in. So it might be like a cream of turkey, chunky style, or you could call it a puree. Uh, I mean, not a puree. You call it chowder because it, yeah. I don't know. Turkey chowder, cream of turkey, turkey stock, some, some milk, and some heavy cream over the top uh, to finish it. And, yeah, it was good. So we froze down. We gave away a few quarts. Froze down a few quarts, did a few quarts. Hi, City Girl so, Country Heart. Yeah. Welcome, welcome. New, uh, are you, is this your first time to our live? I've seen you on other things before, but I can't remember if that's first time to yeah. live. Um, going back in the questions. Backwards. Secondary yes. cuts. So, well, there's a couple of things. So you have what we call um, primal cuts. So primal cuts are halves or quarters. Subprimals are... Those quarters or, or primals broken down one or two more into two or a couple more large pieces, but they're bigger than would be typically roasted or served. Um, so that's that's one, and then you get all of your portion cuts. But actually, when I'm talking about my secondary is your primary steaks are going to be you know your top dollar steaks are your filet mignon and your sirloin and your you know. Um, your loin and your all the all the stuff that goes down along the rib, and then um, to some degree like the muscles coming off the back leg. So a secondary cut is a big piece of muscle that could be called and, and used as a steak, but it's it's not a you know it's not a fillet, it's not a ribeye, it's not. Um, so you have some stuff up in the front shoulder. You can cut some stuff out of the back, top round. Um, you can get some nice steaks, and so that's so sizzlers. Hanger steaks, skirt steaks, uh, Denver, or you know, some have specks and cuts, but they're all, all pretty good. Putting them in a pan, but they're um, and they're not going to be too tough, but they're not quite as special as the others. So, um, but they're good value, and some of them because they're well exercised, even though they're not super tender, which is okay. They're um, they're really meaty. They have good flavor, and they're great for marinating, barbecuing, slicing up. Can even cut them up for to make the heat that type of thing. So you'll find a lot of those in the grocery stores because they're the right price point. So you do have to watch some of the some of the cuts that they sell as steaks are just cut across a couple muscle groups. And they're more for pot roasts and stewing can get tough. So yeah. And Tina jerky. asked, "What would be the most tender yeah. cut for jerky?" But I wanted to show because what we made, well, we didn't make. Our friend made jerky out of. Okay, we'll give a heads up. She got venison. She brought a well, deer. It's not a heads up. The head is down. Head is down in the next picture. I haven't brought it up yet. But I want to give people a heads up because we have a picture of one a of the deer. Beautiful buck that came One of the bucks that she she um, hunted for. Okay, you don't get to go for my camera, girl. Um, <clears throat> so this oh. is one of four deer that we, um, that we ended up processing over the last... Shoot, we finished cutting the last one on Tuesday, portioning it, but in about two weeks, two and a half week period, four deer came this way that we weren't expecting. Um, our, our friend has busy. a large farm that has just deer running like crazy. Um, and I got a call saying, uh, I just got a deer. Who do you recommend for processing? Um, I'm like, I don't really know. I know a couple processors, but they're all full right now because gun season just, just finished. It was early mid gun season. I said, they're all full and I'm not sure how well of a job, like how much meat they really get off, how nice they cut it, uh, how well they treat the animal. Do you really get your deer back, you know, when you grind it up or is it all bunched with everybody else's, et cetera. I said, well, we're slowing down just a little bit. I'll take it, hang it in our barn. I've got all the equipment. Um, I've got an assistant who wanted to learn more and do some stuff kind of off the clock and, you know, together. And so we said, we'll take one. So we cleaned up one pretty fast. And as soon as we got that one done, I heard, oh, we got a huge buck. It was almost a 200 pound. I think it was a nine point. I think that's the one there. That is, yeah. Uh, it was beautiful. And it was also like 60, almost 65 degrees. So we we're a 
little under the gun for hang time. We couldn't just hang it there for three or four days till our schedule opened up. Um, so we um, so we processed that one, and then um, and then my assistant was given as a sort of a gift. We got little bits of the meat and stuff to go out on their farm and hunt their farm, and he got a pretty good sized doe. And so we cleaned that one, and we're like, all right, we've cleaned a lot of venison, and we've got other work to do. So that was a total of... And then Thanksgiving morning, <laughs> I got a phone call. Hey, we got another buck. Yes. Um, and there's a couple oh. people that have tags, so they're, they're all legal. They're all tagged. Um, and so, so we got another buck, and we're like, oh, my gosh. So they came in about 10 in the morning, 10, 11 in the morning. They'd finished field dressing, hung that one up. And I had I had her other one sitting in the fridge, getting ready to portion it out still. And I said, "Hey, do you want some hot turkey?" The gravy wasn't thickened, but I got hot turkey, and the stuffing came out, so I fed them turkey breakfast. Uh, they got the best, fr freshest turkey. So mm -hmm. we did process, and we did traditional European seaming, very minimal bone saw. We used everything other than the hoofs. Um, we did make stock. We portioned. We ground. We cubed. Uh, we did really nice knife work on it. We took, you know, it took extra time. Yeah. One of the hides is going to that big buck. The high, it's getting a full mount. I understand. And then we took bones from the three and boiled them down to make a full roasted venison stock into a demi gloss. So I have yeah. about a gallon and a half of demi gloss and some stock. My partner has some, and then we sent a bunch of the stock and a little bit of demi back to um, the original owner. And then one set of bones went over to an older Korean woman who uh, wanted to use bones and head and stuff for her own Korean stuff uh, and soups. And so we used yeah. everything. We did not let anything go to waste. And back to the jerky. Jerky. Um, our friend who got most of the bucks and most of the deer. Mostly wanted grind and jerky. And I said, yeah. well, really? Because I like stew and some grind and some jerky and, you know, fajita, whatever. So we took... We hand cut as thin as we could, so sort of like a stir fry style, mm -hmm. and sent back 25 pounds on one, and I think 15 or 20 pounds. Now we probably sent eight or 10 pounds of 25 on the other for jerky, and she sent us back some of the jerky, and it's mm -hmm. amazing. Um, it doesn't taste like all the jerky that's covered up with all the sugar and all the funny. Yeah. It doesn't taste like anything. This one had one was uh, like a soy. Sesame soy. Sesame soy, and the other one had some gochujang or you know, spicy um, Korean chili paste, um, and, and they're really good. What cuts did you use? Yeah, so that? we used um, we used some top butt. So you want to use tender cuts. You're right mm -hmm. about that. Ten, and not the fillet, not the back strap. They're kind of too tender and too precious. But you want to look to the top round, which is the the rump, the biggest muscle in the leg, because that's the most tender. Um, the bottom round could be a little tough. The eye round you might be able to use. And then up in the shoulder, most of the shoulder is pretty tender. So any piece that you can get out that's a big enough chunk that you can either half freeze it and slice it on a slicer or you can hand slice or whatever you want to do. That's um, But tender and you want to get all of the tendon, all of the fat, all of the silver skin, everything other than pure red muscle out because none of that will be tender when you make jerky. And then she just put it on a dehydrator. I think the dehydrator had a little bit of heat on it, a uh, very light heat mm -hmm. built in, but not, not a fancy dehydrator. Dehydrate for about a day, day and a half. Usually dehydrate for a refrigerator about about 60% uh, or so, uh, 50 to 60%. But um, if you can go two, if you can reduce by two times, so you got one third the weight, that's a pretty safe medium storage jerky, especially if it's in a bag. Mm -hmm. um, if you refrigerate it, it can go longer. If you're going to do a long time, you should probably put some nitrates in it and make sure you've brought it down to that safer, that safer, a little bit drier. Yeah. Um, the reason you use some sugar in it is actually to help as a tenderizer. It tastes good, but it, uh, you need the salt and the sugar to both cure and tenderize as well as try and reduce mold uh, and pathogenics. So, yeah, tender cuts. Um, you can, most things that you would cut stew out of, uh, I'd probably avoid the bottom round. Um, and the knuckle um, is a little hard because there's so many things running through there to mm -hmm. clean that out. But yeah. A lot of. Well, and there's, we have a couple of things that we ate off of these deer. Yeah, so this one yeah. is a meal that. You know what you're making in the background. For, yeah, that's the first. The first 
deer that came in. I was guessing was young. the heart. Yeah, it was young buck. It was about a eight point, six point, something like a oh, six, six point. point. Yeah, six point. Um, and it was nice. It was beautiful. So that one, uh, we took the liver the first night. It was maybe twelve hours old. We cooked the liver. I don't mind liver. I don't love liver, but I don't mind it at all. Um, Cindy's not really a big fan. No. Um, but I did a classic. Slice it relatively thin, peel it down, slice it thin, uh, soaked it in some milk for just a little bit, uh, seasoned flour, pan seared, kept it uh, medium rare to medium, so it's a little pinked. Um, we had some really good bacon. Uh, some bacon, had some had sweet potatoes and kale or something. Yeah. And we had some mushrooms and onions, too. So did a classic um, pan, pan, pan breaded, seared. you know. Yeah. Um, and that, um, it came out great. It was... Tender. It was super mild. It was almost a little bit sweet. There was no off taste, no chalkiness, no heavy minerals. Uh, it was really, really good. Again, it was so young um, and you know fresh. And that's the way liver should be. People are usually scared of liver because it's old. Um, but even Cindy had some seconds. It was good. Yeah. Quinn had some. Bella liked it. I froze down another liver because we just can't eat too much liver, uh, and you know that fast. Um, I think Dave. Kept his, froze down one, gave one to Miss Kim. Mm -hmm. I have some hearts. Funny thing is I just bought a beef heart. So I've got a couple of the hearts, which I will probably, you know, stew either into like pot pie with other stuff or uh, maybe cut some of it up and do like, again, like the heater taco type thing. Mm -hmm. And we cooked the skirt steaks. I did some fajita with some skirt steaks and tenderloins. Um, oh, the last year that came in, we were gifted. Yeah. We were gifted some man and my pasta partner uh, each split it up as we liked. He had his own and then and then I so we've got a between gifts from the different pieces and then kind of half of that third buck. Uh yeah, we don't have a lot of beef around and um we have freezer freezers full. are full, but we have a lot of red meat now and it's yeah, pretty so exciting the, and stuff. So this was the stir fry that we had. We made a stir fry one night. I had some shishito peppers, classic ginger garlic soy, kind of a homemade teriyaki. And those were the pieces that she was using or similar pieces. It cut. was, it was. It was the same stuff. Yeah. For the stir jerky. fry because it was tender and cleaned all the way out. She gave me one of those boxes. Mm -hmm. I uh, had some kimchi. We had some market vegetables that were also stir fried and kind of the same spices as the meat but kept separate so I could get a hotter sear on it and then we just had some rice so it's sort of a traditional stir fry it was, it was good. really quite good yeah I was, had that for a couple lunches too yeah so we made out of those first little kind of like tidbits we made about four meals I did oh I did some liver uh, for one or two mornings I chopped up some of the leftover liver that had already been cooked and just threw it in with some eggs some of the leftover mushrooms and onions and liver and with some scrambled egg and had that for breakfast. So. Mm. Yeah, so, yes, and deer do love corn, so these are probably... We have tons of cornfields. Um, they have nearly organic, uh, minimally sprayed 300 acres. It's, um, well, it's the area where Nabi... Um, forages. Forages. Um, of course, the deer move through a lot of areas, but they have lots of produce. They ate half their produce this year. Mm -hmm. um, so they are well-fed, and then there is a tremendous amount of fruit farms, apples... Apple orchards, strawberries, cherries, grapes, and then of course tremendous amounts of commercial corn. So yeah. um, you can't you can't prevent the corn fit. <laughs> Although up north people complain up in the UP sometimes they taste gamey. The deer are quite gamey because they eat uh, all forage and they eat lots of grasses. And when it gets cold or they're kind of looking for more hungry, they start eating the fruit wood barks. And they get gamey and people complain about them. Down here, they're always sweet because of the corn feeding. Our neighbor to the left of us that's building a house, his daughter, who's preteen, got two bucks. One buck was huge right off yeah. the back of our property. Our other neighbor hasn't been out that much, although he seems going out today. They bow hunt in back mm -hmm. uh, because there isn't enough room to real safely He's shooting guns around, um, but we do have a, a decent number of, that run through here, but not like out on the farm. Oh. So, yeah, that was an uh, unsuspecting good part of our non-pasta making hours or some long days uh, cutting a lot of venison. Yeah. So, so Kiri um, said, besides chicken salad, enchilada soup, could you use... Could use another idea for shredded chick shredding shredded chicken to use the shredded chicken up. 
Well, I like to do, um, yeah, soup's great, casseroles and all that. Um, and barbecue. Barbecue, yep, yeah, you can do barbecue sauces. I like taking just a little bit of, like, really fine cut, thin cut onion strips and a little bit of, like, tomato and canned chipotle, chipotle and adobo and making, uh, like, a taco filling, a shredded chicken taco, and you just wet it with Hi, Mike. chicken stock and... Uh, and tomato, uh, you know, and tomato, little tomato puree, and then you can make some rice with it. So that's a really nice one. It tends to work well. Um, poultry. Uh, you can also make mole, and do it easily. Go buy the little glass jars of mole at the ethnic section of your grocery store, or go to a more proper grocery store, <laughs> Spanish grocery store, and buy mole. Um, they're all pretty good. It's not like making it yourself, but follow the directions. They're quite good. Mole. Those brown moles are typically done with turkey. Uh, or chicken, so um, some pulled chicken in there. Uh, what you're looking for is because it's a little drier, is adding things that are going to keep it moist, adding some fat and some some vegetable purees and things. So those are those are good. I mean, you can make enchiladas also, chicken enchiladas, or roll them up. Um, yeah. I'm trying to see if there was anything else that I missed in that, because I know a lot of people were chatting. Um, Okay, yeah, I don't know. Uh, we gave some, we got some deer uh, antlers, given some of the antlers for Puddin, and Puddin looked at one touch, and she has no interest. Yeah, no, in she's not interested. I cut them up into a bunch of pieces for our friend's dog, who's much smaller, um, and cut them on the saw into multiple pieces, because I knew Puddin wasn't going to do anything with them, yeah. which is crazy, because most dogs go nuts with an antler. She'll, she'll eat the meat. She just doesn't. Oh, yeah, it. yeah. She just, the whole antler yeah. bone thing. Is, she's not into hard items. She doesn't actually, I don't, yeah. I don't think she has tooth problems, but she doesn't bite down on things much. Like, she barely will take something like a milk bone out of your hand to chew it up. So, yeah. yeah. And, yes, question, how's pasta going? Pasta's eggs. really busy. We are having a pretty good year. Uh, a lot of adjustments, obviously, with COVID, but we're finding our way. Yeah. Um, community has been very supportive. Uh, we are finding new customers all over the place. We're working on some bigger wholesale customers, but the farmer's market has been extended an extra month. Um, the outdoor market, so it's getting pretty cold, but we're going one more month all the way up until the week before Christmas. Um, I actually served some hot food this week because they need a little more food vendors, so I got up a little. So we're running a 9 to 1 market instead of a 7 to 2 market. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we're selling hot food, we're selling sauces, we're selling olive oil, we made some, um, we're selling gift baskets, we're doing our regular stuff, we're doing local drop-offs, and people are coming out. They're not wanting to go to the stores, they're wanting to support local people. Uh, we've cobbled together enough products that, um, you know, we're not getting rich, but we're paying four part-time staff, two babysitters, keeping all of our bills paid, and so we can't complain at all. So, no, yeah, pasta's nice. doing just fine. It's and we're working, well. we're doing a lot of hours, we're working a lot. It's going to slow down a little bit. And you have some projects you're trying to work on for that this winter. It'd be nice to be able to can some sauces if that pulls through somewhere. I'm trying to start, yeah, getting some of our sauces that were freezing in plastic containers and getting them put in jars through a co-packer. That's just beginning. That's a process, and there's some costs, a bunch of costs involved. I'm trying to figure it figuring out. Figuring it out, but I think we may be able to get that by the end of spring, which means we can both ship them to people that want mail order, but I can also then sell them through our other farm stores and such uh, mm -hmm. because we can't wholesale our current product. Yeah. Um, so we can actually wholesale that, and people have asked a lot. So yeah, that... Um, yeah, we got a lot of projects. Yeah, so lots so, of stuff going on. We're having grain problems. Uh, trucks bringing in pallets of grain. I'm almost out of grain again, and uh, I'm, uh, I'm hearing different numbers of days and weeks, or many weeks of when the next pallet's going to come in, which is a little concerning. However, we are coming into our slowest period of the year, and so we can stretch things, and we have some heavy cleaning and projects, but uh, we may run out of grain uh, this week. Good news is our well, our whole some of our other stuff runs on different grain. Our storeroom is packed pretty full. We've been put, working really hard to stock it up, mm -hmm. so we're not running out of product. We'll get through Christmas without running out of product. But I'm, <laughs> I've got people that want work, and I can't give them too much work if we don't have, have grain. things to process. Uh, so we'd like to, yeah. like to keep them on a regular schedule. Yeah, so that yeah. that's more concerning to benefit. The other thing is, so all the restaurants are closed in Michigan right now. Uh, to go is available. 
Um, however, that means in most places their chef and their assistant chef, one, two, three people, are working. Managers may be helping or assistant manager doing to-goes, uh, but almost everybody's laid off again in the restaurant world. That includes my assistant who works full-time for one place and part-time for me, and he's laid off, so he's lost two-thirds of his income, so we are trying to Trying to make sure that these other people have, you know, have at least something. It's not, it's not enough, but that they've got a few hundred dollars coming in yeah. to uh, pad them. Uh, we may get word this week. We'll get word with three week close down if they're gonna, what they're going to do. My heavy, heavy suspicion is we're going to do at least another three week in status quo restaurants on to go only. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing that has happened is. People that have the little igloo tents or small tents are allowed to host six people. And they did confirm if they're outside, they can, and they have a plan to fully sanitize and spray down the entire, you know, basically fumigate the, the entire the, thing. The entire thing. Um, they're booking for you know, a lot of places for an hour, hour and a half. I don't know if they're, they're probably charging a seating charge in a minimum. It's almost like a private catering or like people would get in karaoke rooms. Yeah. Uh, so people are loving it. The two places around the corner from us that have them are booked. There are three tents each, which is not enough to make much money. And they're full all the time. Uh, people are absolutely going nuts. They feel like rock stars having... But you can only have six people there. So, yeah. And at this point, they're actually uh, suggesting you only have family units mm -hmm. or people that live and work closely together. Yeah. So even having six people is outside, could be outside of the guidelines in a few days. Yeah. So we're waiting to hear, but the restaurant world is on second shutdown is absolutely suffering. And, and you know, the first one was bad, but this one's a death sentence to people. Some of them. Yeah. 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 But we, we are able to work around that, so uh, we're thankful that we are not in a large, expensive lease um, restaurant right now. No. No. Yeah, working wholesale has helped us a bit, especially saying that we can go into farmers, farm stores and farmers markets has actually helped us out. But you can go into the grocery stores and all the other stores and where they were wiping down carts and really checking volume at like 20%. Thanksgiving wasn't packed shoulder to shoulder, like grocery. All right, I think, uh, see if we're back. Um, seems like we had a, um, a little glitch seems there. Seems like the audio just cut out, like the software cut the audio out, even though it was running. Yeah. So hopefully that worked. Yeah, we um, just reset that. But yeah, yeah, so the restaurant world's a mess. The stores are doing the best they can, but they're definitely taking in all the customers. Fast food is out of control. Lines, uh, they're doing great. Pizza and all the rest. Uh, local community is shopping pretty local and trying to do the best they can. Um, COVID in our, so Michigan's relatively bad, the, but the west side has become as hot a spot as anywhere. Yeah. Um, it surrounds right on the edge of where we're at. So Kalamazoo, uh, as of a week ago, was in pretty good shape. Now, Kalamazoo has been pretty observant to masking and different things. 
the surrounding counties south and west and north, Have which are rural, which are very rural, and people just didn't pay a lot of attention through most mm -hmm. of the time and just didn't really pay, you know, just it wasn't as big of a deal because it was rural. They're hit hard. I saw numbers of 12 to 15 percent, up to almost 20 percent of tested, not of total, of tested were coming in positive. That's, That's huge. Uh, I mean, New York is looking at 8 percent, and California they're looking at 8 percent. Um, and we're so we're way above that. And that includes our county, although we're kind of on the edge of the county. Um, but I think total they're looking at about half a percent. They think half a percent of total population of Michigan. So it's it's worse than it's ever been. But it's also we didn't have much effect. We were um, all the summer. first round, yeah. So it's pretty bad here. So we are being uh, more careful. Mm -hmm. It's clear that the two best areas in the lower portion are Ann Arbor and Kalamazoo. Those are probably among the two most observant mm -hmm. social distancing just by the political climate and what people have done and just whatever. And all the universities and big businesses and things that instituted policies. Um, Hillsdale County has not closed has not. All, Oh, really? All the indoor seating restaurants. Yeah. There are a few places that are resisting. They, they find some liquor licenses, which is easy to do. Uh, there are other places that have continued. They've threatened some $1,000 fines. Uh, as one guy put it, he goes, what's a thousand dollars? If you look at how much I'm losing every day, who cares about a thousand dollar fine? Yeah. Uh, that's an emerging situation right now. What's happening, it's very, very few, uh, but there are a few people that are sticking their neck out and saying that it's, you know, life, liberty, and pursuit of paying their bills. Yeah. Uh, so there is some, definitely some yeah. sympathy there. So I uh, don't know the whole Whole deal, yeah. Hillsdale's is a is a little, you know, Hillsdale's an interesting area. I mean, the whole area is a very Michigan's a very independent. We've been all over the national news for independence and sometimes a little bit crazy um, <laughs> this year, uh, but that's pretty traditional. Um, yeah, well, you can't get taxes out of businesses that aren't open. Well, the problem that's that's hurting the restaurants right now is there's no supplemental, so. Um, there's no PPP, there's no extra unemployment, there's no, the supplemental unemployment for individuals isn't there. So people basically got laid off and they're like, well, what do I do? So they can wait for basic unemployment, but people like, um, everybody I employ is part-time. So the guy that got laid off of a near full-time job can't get unemployment because he can't get partial because he makes money with me. Well, it's the same money he always made. In fact, I'm getting letters for people that are laid off as part of their unemployment that I'm due a portion of money as part of their unemployment, and I'm writing um, protests, which you can do, and I usually I wouldn't usually, but I'm writing protests on it saying, whoa, whoa, we're, we haven't changed our hours. I'm not paying a portion of their stuff. They should get what they get, but it needs to come from the different pool of their other employers. Since... since being with for the last paid. year and a half or from the state because I'm still this is someone who was let go long before no I have current people that mm. have unemployment claims yeah, yeah um that I have two people over the COVID that have if they file unemployment or get unemployment I'm due hundreds if not thousands of dollars to them and I and so I've written protests which you, you know that to say no no we're still employing them we're still paying yeah. them Please give them unemployment, but please allocate it to the Where? company that's furloughed them, or please allocate it to the state pool. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's kind of. But yeah, we're um, yeah. Michigan is not economically doing well. Uh, it's hanging in there, but it's uh, it's taking a hit. And the we second do, one is pretty bad. We do need to do a giveaway. Mm -hmm. um, and right now, um, I haven't picked out a book option, but I will tell you what it, um, we'll do: our normal pasta versus. Um, we could probably, I mean, it's been a while since we've done four seasons and harvest, but if someone's won that, we could always change up the book, um, to one of the others that we typically use for gardening and such. Um, but, uh, we should do a giveaway Our we have about 13 people in the room, including your mom. So bring that down to 12 cause she won't answer. So good chances you'll win. This mm -hmm. would be open to everybody in here. So we're not going to limit based on who's won recently. Well, Tina won last week or last year, last, last month. month. <laughs> Maybe she's. No, no. I don't want right. to limit anybody. All right, Tina, because, type fast. <laughs> so Tina, if you're a fast typer, you know, we haven't had a month yet where we've actually had two people, the same person win twice sure. in a row. 
but um, we'll either give away our pasta, um, the two bags. Typically two bags. I'll throw a third bag in. We still have some of our pumpkin and some of our fall pasta, fall blend left. Yeah. Um, it, it really slacks off sales after Thanksgiving. I think it's great because of the fall flavor. Yeah. It really is good for long after that flavor wise. And we yeah. sell some, but, um, but yeah, we'll throw in a, we'll fall in, throw in a fall flavors because yeah. I really like it. Uh, but uh, we've got, oh, we've got a few left. So, yeah. And so we'll throw in two others of either your selection or my selection, if you'd like. Yep. Yeah. Or if you do not want pasta and you want um, one of the gardening or homesteading books. We'll send you a deer heart or a deer liver frozen. No. No. We will not be doing that. <laughs> no frozen items going into the mail. No, no frozen fresh kill. Pasta <laughs> or a gardening slash homesteading book that we can, um, it, it'll either be for season harvest or one of the others. Um, if someone already has that book, we can view, pull out one we of the might be able to find a possum for you if you need a possum. Oh, my goodness. They, tend they to have had they tend problems to show with up them. around here. They do show up around here once in a while. Okay, so the rules are the first person with the correct answer in our live chat here. Now, that doesn't always come up the same way in different live chats, but the first person with the correct answer on our chat here um, will win. Your choice of the pasta or the book. Um, we have the book option if you're not one not eating wheat, uh, or you can have the pasta, whichever. Um, so, <laughs> uh, no, our possums aren't. We haven't been roadkill. No, our possums are they're they're actually back here. They're They've, more likely to go after the chickens. Yes, we've had possum issues with our chickens. We're living under the porch and torture the dog. <laughs> yeah, and the dog tries to go under the porch. Dog and the cat. Um. So anyway, the question is. How many deer did Mike process this month? So we were going over that earlier. That's a trick question. How many deer did you process this month? Or last month. Well, oh, okay, in the last month. I have processed zero this month. Oh, gosh. Within the last month, since our last live show, how many deer did Mike process? Uh, we're waiting for answers. And if people have other food questions or other questions, yeah. we'll... We can always throw them up there. Oh, oh Green, Green Gables. Gables. There you go. Green Gables. Yep. Four. four. It was four. Four. Yes. Three for our friend. One of them, which she yielded back to us for processing. No. One for my assistant. So, yeah, it was a total of four. Three bucks and one dough. Yep. I didn't even realize you were in the room until I just saw you. Well, the Green Gables up there said, oh, pasta. Yes, uh, I did see that. But that's, that, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, but I didn't realize she was in the room while we were right. chatting. So about Green Gables, stuff. make sure you let us know pasta or a gardening book, um, and we could talk about the choices. Um, email we have or direct message your address if we don't have it already. Yes. And um, if you want pasta and you want to select specific ones, please let me know which two you want. Otherwise, I will pick two fun ones. Oh, I ordered two more dyes from Italy this week. Ooh. They may be in. Uh, well, I ordered a bunch of dyes, but I ordered two new shapes okay. for some replacements. So uh, hopefully they will um, arrive before the end of the year, but they are not available for giveaway because I haven't seen them and run them yet. Yeah. So actually, I think it's been a while, but I think Green Gables has one in the past, but I don't know if I still have your address somewhere. My my shipping system has been updated, but going back a number of months, it keeps some of the addresses. So sometimes I put in a name. And if it you got pasta before. And it and it pops back up because um, of our shipping. Yeah. I'm just writing down Green Gables. Green Gables. <laughs> An armadillo. Okay. No armadillos here. No. Um, <laughs> just... To let you know, you can either send it directly to parttimepermies at gmail.com for address, or you could go on to Facebook and message me through part-time permies there um, with the address and which thing you'd like. Um, so, And yeah. for people that came in late, we had mentioned the promo code. Yes, the what? promo code. I It's in the chat further up that yes. I wrote down. Um and I think Bella dropped my phone down there. Uh, so <laughs> she's kind of falling asleep. So I'm trying to remember what it was now. It was holiday something. Um, holiday savings, was it? Holiday, holiday 2020. Yeah. I think that's what okay. It was. 
My, I should know my own promo codes. I know, right? You're the one who made it up. Wow, they're all awesome. Holiday Saver. Holiday Saver 2020. That's Holiday Saver 2020 gets you 10% off. Only the gift baskets. There's two different sizes. The chef selections of 12 or 6 combo. Or any of the olive oil that's good through January 3rd. If you spend more than $50, shipping is also free. That's always the case. And um, it's more or less unlimited. Um, yeah, it's not for one item. If you keep, if you buy multiples um, of those items, of those items, it will also apply. So, uh, just so you know it, if you're buying, and also if you're ever doing anything from us, please make sure you make a note. We probably know who you are, but if we don't, because we like to throw in extra stuff, um, especially if it's going to you. If it's going to your friends and family, we may not throw something <laughs> in. But uh, if we know it's going back to you, I almost always throw in a tote bag or an extra bag of something. Or there's always something in there, yeah. um, just because we want to give you the best deal. Holiday Saver 2020, Miranda. Not quite. <laughs> so I just put the web page there. I also put the code there, and that is to ship anywhere in the U.S. US 48, free shipping, yeah. over $50 um, is always free. Yeah. And 10% off on top of that. I don't think there, the six pack, be careful. The six pack six is, is under $50. $43. You will end up paying $9 shipping or $9.95 shipping if you don't hit $50. Yeah. So buy, about, <laughs> buy an olive oil with it or buy two bags of pasta. Make sure you hit the 50 because it will basically come free. Um, yeah, don't just. That's the only, nobody ever ends up under, rarely pays the shipping because we like to build it in. It's, it's efficient. It's basically efficient to do that. So Mike's Depot is still looking for a rigatoni pasta like they made in the 70s and 80s. Um, I am not sure if you got a picture what makes it different in the 70s and 80s. Then now we have I to. have a really big 20 millimeter, which is almost like a Calamarata. I also have a rigatoni we call Tortiglione, which is a barbershop pull twist. That's like 15 millimeters, so it's medium sized. Mm -hmm. I did have a 12 millimeter. We kind of stopped making that one because it was too close. Mm -hmm. But I would say you're probably talking about the Torticolione, uh, unless you love them really big. But they're both very nice. We're actually selling a lot of both of those. Yeah, um, yeah. They, they eat really well. So I would say Torticolione yeah. is what we call it. Yeah. Uh, but if it's if there's something different, please shoot me a picture because I am sure. not sure what was different in the 70s and 80s from today. If you can find all of ours are ridged, we don't do any smooth. That's a chef's choice. I don't like the smooth, so I don't buy the smooth. <laughs> uh, both in that they're rough, but they also have the ridges on them. Oh, little one fell asleep. They were big. I wonder if they were. So the twenty, the twenty millimeter one is almost a quarter size. Like, yeah. Um, we cut them a little bit on the short end, so they're not too big. And sometimes they're called calamarata, like calamari, calamari rings. They're almost as big as like a cannelloni tube that you would stuff, but they're not long. They're not like three inches long like that. They're shorter, yeah. Yeah, they're much shorter. They're three quarters of an inch, maybe. But like. yeah, they do expand a bit when you cook them too. Yeah, so they're they. I mean, they're a sizable presence on your plate when you cook those, which is what makes them fun. Oh yes. Yeah, so you're thinking like a cannelloni, I think, which can be about three inches long, pretty good size. And people would pipe in cheese or meat, and then, you know, you could bake them. But you can also do manicotti. Manicotti is typically, uh, you know, is wrapped, a wrapped piece of fresh pasta. So you'd fill it and wrap mm -hmm. it. But actually, Chef Alberto claims that manicotti should not be pasta. I believe that's the one. It's it's crepes. Oh. So, that, and the, so you traditionally make crepes and fill them and mm -hmm. bake them off. Which is a lot more work. But the Americans do more pasta than people. The you make a big tube. Yeah. Um, but cannelloni is, I believe, cannelloni is the pasta. Manicotti is actually crepes. Hmm. Both could be filled. They're both very good. Um, you can find trays of the longer, you know, sh uh, not shell but tubes to fill, like to Checo and maybe even Barilla will sell trays of them. At the they at the bigger grocery stores that have more selection, usually on a on a lower shelf because it's a thin tray, make sure they're not broken up. Um, however, I will tell you that with the, still some pasta shortages, I'm guessing they've cut out a lot of the specialty stuff and just filled the shelves mm. in production with other things. 
but um, you can order those online and, and they're nice. I, I don't typically dry things like that because our drying process, I find they're likely to collapse or, or yeah. crack. Um, I'd have to put them through a faster drying process. We have shot some fresh ones for a restaurant and we have used fresh pasta sheets, which you can cut into squares. You can buy frozen squares of pasta sometimes, not from me, but. Uh, are you on the Mike's Depot? Are you in Southwest Michigan by chance? Because if so. If, if you're, yeah, and if you're close and you're doing, if you're coming to a market or meeting up with us, we do shoot custom. Yeah. So if you're doing something like that, I will shoot, I will make custom for you. Fresh. There's not, there's not yeah, fresh. Uh, that could be frozen or whatever. Yeah. I don't really charge anything extra for it because we just change the dye and we cut it differently and whatever. So. Yeah, if, if you're in the area and you let me know in advance, I will run custom, too. Yeah. So. But, um, but there's some should, good options out yeah, there. There are. Okay, so we should wrap up for the night. It's almost 820, 8, 10, 20. Oh, my goodness. I was reading the 18. 10, 20. Bella's falling asleep on my lap here um, out of the frame. But, yeah. We should wrap up. We, oh my goodness, it's the last one of the year. Yeah. So I will try to get a couple videos out before the end of the year. Um, but I guess we'll have to say we'll see you with the new year. And I hope everybody has a safe Christmas. He's so uh, hour away from Kilmazoo. Well, Saturdays, Saturdays I'm at the market 9 to 1. Farmer's Market on Bank me, Street. As long as you give me a couple of days heads up so we make sure we get it on like our Thursday production. Um, and we'd be happy to do whatever you need. Um, otherwise, uh, we're on the west side of Kalamazoo, and I'm out and around town. Making deliveries. I do deliveries once a month to the east side. That's going to be Tuesday, this yeah. this um, coming Tuesday. Um, but if there's any way that we can reasonably make a connection with you, we'll definitely Just, we'll go out of our way to do it if it's possible. Send so. us a message, yep. definitely. Yep. Um, so, yes, I hope everybody has a great Christmas or whatever holiday you you celebrate and New Year's. I think we're doing Year's. a venison roast, rack roast, or we're doing whatever. venison for Christmas. Probably depending on what so we. I have a ham too. Yes, that's I have true. a local ham that was gifted to us a while ago that I need to use. So if we're doing stuff for your family, we're cooking ham. Yeah, that's true. Uh, if we're doing, uh, if it's just us, I'm probably gonna do a nice piece of venison, and we have some of that demi glace. So sometimes yeah. Costco has uh, chanterelles in there down as low as like six or seven dollars right now. That sounds good. Or nine dollars because people aren't buying them. They're West Coast chanterelles. We might be doing uh, venison and chanterelles um, just because I'm able to do that for New Year's. But one of, one of the two, I foresee some hopefully decent mushrooms. So we might have some venison. good, more um, good meal picks coming well, up. Well, if I don't have to pay for the venison, I can pay for the mushrooms. It makes for a. There you go. And I don't have to pay for the demi, which yeah, we you made, have that. So. so anyway, we will see. Oh, Christmas is Carrie's oh, yeah. birthday. Happy birthday. Happy early birthday here. Well, there'll probably be a few Instagrams and Facebook, and the tree will be decorated, decorated in the next week or two, probably. We usually decorate closer to Christmas. Yeah, we do. Um, in fact, this is the earliest we've gotten the tree. I think it was, it's, it was, it was about, about the time last, last time. Year. Yeah. Um, so, yes, we will see you guys around. Have a happy holidays and happy new year. Mm -hmm. And we'll see you the first Sunday of January. Take care, you guys.